if you had a chance to learn coding from scratch, how would you do it differently? I started to learn coding when ChatGPT was just born, and I really struggled where to start and what to learn. But Things have been changing so fast today. Knowing how to use AI tools can literally reduce your coding study journey from one year to one month. So in today's video, I'm going to share how I would use ChatGPT to learn Python in different phases of your study, as well as my suggestions in the end of the video. So let's get started. Until today, I can still clearly remember that Steve Jobs said, I think the greatest value of learning how to, I think everybody in this country should learn how to program a computer, should learn a computer language. However, this is what Jensen Huang said. It is our job to create computing technology such that nobody has to program. So here is a question. Is coding still needed in the age of AI? Well, I think the short answer is yes. Like what I mentioned in my old video, coding is about innovation, creativity, and the humanity. Of course, nowadays we have a low code or no code alternative, but we would never build something fancy and complex out of it that can transform our life. And in my point of view, coding is also about cultivating your logical and sequential way of thinking, as well as your problem solving skills. You can then apply this coding mindset to your day to day life and make it more handable. For example, you want to bake a cake. You need to break this process into a smaller and manageable steps. And if you end up getting a not so delicious cake, you can easily detect the cost by checking each step. Maybe the oven's temperature is not set up properly, or maybe it's caused by the lack of some ingredient. Many programming languages out there are also very powerful, like C and C++ are the two ancestors of Python. So why Python? I think besides the fact that Python is very beginner friendly and its syntax is pretty much like English grammar, on top of that, Python can meet most of our needs like basic data wrangling and manipulation with pandas and NumPy, training machine learning and deep learning models with TensorFlow, building applications and websites with GUI, or even doing video processing with Libresaw and MoviePy. In other words, Python is very versatile programming language. But as beginner coder, how are you going to learn Python faster? So that you grasp the fundamentals in just one month, but others might need three months to complete it. Well, here is how ChatGPT comes into play. As Python beginner, your first priority is definitely learning basic syntax. You will have a big chunk of knowledge to consume in this phase, like uh, variables, data types, if else statement, functions, etc. The first way that ChatGPT can help you is to generate a customized Python study plan. And uh, here I'm logging to the ChatGPT 4.0 to show you some prompts that you can use to optimize your study. So uh, I'm going to start with the identity or what you want ChatGPT to be. Imagine you are excellent at scheduling and Python. Then you need to clarify what you want ChatGPT to do. So I'm going to input the task like this. Please help me generate a customized study plan to learn Python. But remember, when using ChatGPT, it's really like the more details you provide, the better the outcome. So here comes to the detail. I have zero experience in coding. I want to learn the basic syntax in around two weeks and the I can commit for hours per day. And of course, how much time you can commit on a daily basis is up to you. And depending on your preference, you can also tell ChatGPT your favorite way of learning. For example, I'm not really into reading books. Then I can add one more sentence like this. I'm the person who likes online tutorials like uh, websites or videos. But if you look at the study plan, there's a problem quite obvious. There's no consistency in the study resources from ChatGPT. You definitely don't want to jump from one resource to another. So to avoid this issue, you can add, I want to have the same resource throughout the entire study. But it's still not everything. You can see that entire plan is generated in the form of uh, many sentences, which is hard to read and follow. Then what about asking ChatGPT to design the format you like? What about I want to get Excel file? Then according to my preference, I can make a request like this. Put everything in the Excel file with columns like uh, days, time, allocations, 
tasks, etc. Then you can see ChatGPT generated a clickable link where you can download the study plan in the Excel. And here's what files looks like. We have a days, time allocations, tasks, and a consistent study resource, which is called w3schools.com. If you Google it, it turns out that it is a YouTube channel for coding study. You can learn many coding languages besides Python, like uh, SQL, Java, and uh, JavaScript. I think for me, it's definitely the biggest source of fun when using ChatGPT. You play around with it and uh, make some modifications, then you can get many resources that you've never heard it before. Since you already have customized a study plan at your hand. Are you going to follow the schedule and uh, move from day to day? If this is what you are planning to do, I'm afraid this way of study is very inefficient because the whole process is quite linear. You move into the next day without deepening your understanding of what you learned yesterday. So you will be in the cycle of uh, learning, forgetting, and uh, learning, forgetting. But ChatGPT can help you out. And here's the thing, the way to ensure efficient study is constantly get feedback from your environment to know what works and what doesn't work. And this is exactly what ChatGPT can provide. You can send a follow-up prompt, for example. So you are excellent test examiner in Python. Generate assignment containing five to 10 questions to test my knowledge after each day based on the study plan you made. In terms of the level of a challenge, I think the best assignment should be 20% above what you learn. So you can add one more sentence. And in each day's assignment, increase the difficulty of each question a bit of above what I learn. Store everything in the table. Then what else you need to learn after you learn basic syntax? You may already hear from other people that you should get your hands dirty to make some hands-on projects, but how can you jump into that without even getting to know libraries? So at the current stage, you must get to know some fundamental functions in pandas, numpy, and uh, matplotlib. Attention, I said some, but not all. There are actually hundreds of functions in pandas, and uh, that's extremely, extremely inefficient that you try to learn every function. And uh, trust me, this is uh, one of the mistakes I made when I was beginner. So here's the prompt that you can use to filter the fundamental functions in pandas library. Let me just use pandas as an example. You know almost everything about Python's library pandas. List the most important and the fundamental functions in pandas that I need to learn in the table. I'm a beginner in Python and uh, I only know the basic syntax. My goal is to do some hands-on projects after it. And let's take a look at the outcome from ChatGPT. As you can see, ChatGPT grouped these functions into several categories like uh, data loading, data exploration, data cleaning, selection, etc. It also gave some learning approach recommendations. And uh, based on my experience, I think these functions are definitely enough for you to handle basic and the even intermediate level projects. Like what I showed in the previous step, you may as well add more details to this prompt to get more study resources from ChatGPT. But I wouldn't bother to do that. I would probably just check Pandas documentation, find these fundamental functions and based on the table and learn everything one by one with examples given down below. And along the way, you can also learn how to read documentations, which is actually a very, very important skill. It's like a, how to use dictionary when you learn a foreign language. Then after learning Pandas, you can change the prompt a bit and apply it to learn other libraries like NumPy's and Matplotlib. Depending on your pace of study, this process might take you another two weeks, which I think should be doable to learn the fundamentals of these three libraries. Congratulations, and you know you already know a lot about Python. Well, it's actually still far from enough. Huh? But it's definitely time to get your hands dirty to do some hands-on project. And here's the thing, you definitely don't want to do very challenging one in the very first beginning to get yourself totally demotivated, right? So it's time to start small and simple and then upgrade to more challenging ones. And here's how I ask ChatGPT. You know a lot of uh, Python projects, give me three to five projects for practice. Note, I'm a Python beginner. I know basic syntax and uh, some fundamental functions of three libraries, pandas, numpy, and uh, matplotlib. Store project's names, description, and the link to each specific project in the table. 
And here's what we get. We will start with the easiest one, which is called simple data analysis with pandas. And the data set is called Iris data set, which is actually available on Kaggle. The task here is quite simple. We just need to upload the data set, check its descriptive statistics, and perform the basic data visualization. The last one is the most challenging one, and it's about analyzing sales data to discover monthly trends, best performing products, and the customer demographics. So after I get the data sets from Kaggle and upload it to Jupyter Notebook, I can, for example, aggregate the sales by using group by function based on order data, category, segment, product name to see if a product sells or not. And you can explore this data set in whatever way you want. At this stage, you probably have a clear roadmap about where to go. Then it's time to further explore this coding journey. Depending on your interest and the preference, you can log into Kaggle and check other people's projects applied in different areas like a business, healthcare, etc. You can learn many new functions and the coding skills along the way and gradually level up the complexity of your projects. And uh, here comes the last part of this video, my suggestion. Firstly, coding is all about applying what you learn. I think only through applying can you have a deep understanding of how and the when to use a specific approach. And by playing around, you will also discover that there are actually many different ways to solve a problem. And uh, some methods are more time saving than the others. For example, if I want to change all columns names of data sets, instead of uh, putting new columns names one by one in the function, which is called rename, I can actually save new column names in the list and apply dict and the zip to replace old names. Secondly, you really have to be patient, especially in the early days. Like when I was beginner, I wrote some code that didn't work. I really want to shut down my PC and even smash it. Even a small number of errors could make me feel like, uh, oh, everything was against me. But with time going by, I kind of realized having errors raised is actually completely normal. And uh, it's something every coder faces on a daily basis. And we only need to coexist with errors and learn how to debug, which is actually a very good exercise and a practice to improve your problem solving skills. Remember, you are not alone in this boat. And if you copy paste the error to stack flow, there are so many people asking the same question. And nowadays, you even have ChatGPT to help you debug. The only thing you need to do is calm down and search for the solution. Last but not least, the coding is endless journey. The tech industry nowadays is constantly evolving because of AI. What you learn today might be completely outdated tomorrow. So it's quite, quite important to have a, a lifelong learning mindset to keep your competition. So that's pretty much what I would do if I were given a chance to learn Python once again. I hope this video can give you some inspiration, but it's easier said than done. And what I said is completely useless if you don't try it yourself. And if you're interested in this topic, you can also click on this video and I will see you next time. Bye.